What is going on everybody? Jonathan here with Gig Nation and today we're going to be talking about orders that pop up that look like they're going to be paying out significantly more than they actually end up paying out in the end. So this we're in this video we're going to apply it to DoorDash, but you can also use it for Grubhub, Uber Eats, uh, really any platform. So when an order pops up in the DoorDash platform, you'll get a notification and it's going to tell you the total miles you drive and the total payout. So this order here for example, uh, that pops up it's a two dollar offer and then we can see the total miles on that and we can decide based on that data if we want to accept it or if we want to decline that offer now obviously this offer is a decline because it's only a two dollar payout it doesn't really matter how close an order is a two dollar payout just isn't worth it but there are some other factors uh, that come into play especially on these higher payout orders so let's say one pops up that's like nine ten bucks and you can see it's a three mile delivery now normally uh, that would just be automatic for a lot of people they would accept this but there's actually one other uh, piece of criteria that you have to keep in mind when you're accepting orders and a lot of people don't and it ends up uh, giving people this offer regret where they accept an offer they think it's gonna be a great payout and then they look back at their earnings throughout the night throughout the day whatever it was and then they realize that they weren't making as much as they originally thought that they would make and what we're talking about here is the amount of time that it takes to do a delivery. So there's really no way to know uh, before you accept an order how long it's gonna take because there's a couple different factors that come into play here. And I did a video uh, last week about making a list of the different restaurants in your area that take a really long time to prepare orders and putting those kind of on a do not fly list uh, orders that you're not going to accept you'll automatically decline these from these restaurants unless they're really high payouts because you know you're going to be waiting around for a long time and at the end of the day if you accept a ten dollar offer it might only be three miles but if it's going to take a really long time then all of a sudden that payout uh, that per hour payout that you thought you were getting is a whole lot lower so there's one other trick that i want to show you guys that you can use to help filter out these orders as they come in so I'm gonna pull up Google Maps right here and as, as I can see, I can look around the Seattle area and see all of the different places in Seattle that are either red or orange. And this is basically showing me traffic flow if it's heavily congested. And as you can see uh, right here on I-5 South, it's crazy heavy traffic. So if I were to, let's say, accept an order that would take me down to Pike Place Market, I look uh, and it pulls me up on an alternate route that actually takes about 38 minutes to go just over seven miles. Now, if I were to actually try and hop on I-5 South, that would take me a total of over 45 minutes just to get about eight miles. So even if I'm you know, picking up an order that's like a $15, $16 order, maybe even more than that, but it's taking me on a route that's heavily congested or to an area where I know there's gonna be a lot of traffic, then all of a sudden it might not be worth even taking this order. Uh, because all of that traffic, all of the time that it takes, really takes a, a hit on my earnings. So how exactly are you going to apply this? How do you put it into play to actually filter out those orders that you don't want to take? You might be thinking, hey, uh, DoorDash just lowered their acceptance time. Right now I have under 40 seconds to accept a delivery. Obviously I can't just pull up Google Maps as soon as I see an order, uh, route it, see how long it's going to take. I don't have time to do this and I can't be distracted while I'm driving, so I totally can't do this. I agree with you, that is not the solution that I'm recommending here. I'm recommending something entirely different. And basically this is what I'm doing, uh, is I'm pulling up Google Maps when I have downtime. So let's say I'm sitting waiting at a restaurant, waiting for orders, doing nothing, doing nothing really productive, just waiting for the right offer to pop up. This is when, when I'm gonna pull up Google Maps. And so I'm not gonna do any routing, I'm not gonna you know, see how long it would take me to get to a specific place, but I'm going to look at this map and I'm going to see where the red and the orange areas are. And then from that, I'm gonna create a zone, an area that I want to deliver in, because I'm gonna avoid those offers that take me you know, to those highly congested areas. So in this case, I'm gonna to stick to North Seattle unless you know, potentially I get an offer that takes me to the east side of that central Seattle area, more like that Capitol Hill area. It looks like I can actually get there without hitting a ton of traffic, and I know there's some high paying offers in that area as well, but for the most part, I'm sticking to North Seattle. Now, a lot of you might actually do this already. You might kind of have your zones, your areas that you stick to, but I definitely encourage you to integrate Google Maps to pull it up and kind of check on traffic flow as much as you can, uh, because stuff does change. You know, you might be used to heavy traffic, 
at you know 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. on a given weeknight, and you might entirely avoid areas uh, like downtown that get hit by that heavy traffic. But there's also other times when you won't be expecting heavy traffic when it pops up. And I'm talking about different events that happen in town, accidents, weather, stuff that may impact traffic and could impact your deliveries. So you really gotta be checking in on this, pulling up Google Maps occasionally, you know, maybe once, twice uh, per shift, for, per block, whatever it is that you're on, and looking into it, looking into traffic and using that uh, just to get, you know, a better background picture and a little bit of a zone drawn out for where you want to accept these offers. So I've been using this technique for a while and I use it quite a bit to weed out orders that look like they would be high paying orders. I'll show you for example here on the DoorDash app, I get a lot of these uh, that are like 15, $20, sometimes even upwards of 20 bucks and I end up rejecting them uh, because it'll be at that time of the day when there's traffic uh, in the downtown area on I-5 South getting to downtown and all of a sudden that $20 offer that looks like it's super good, it's almost irresistible, isn't gonna be making me that much money because it takes over an hour to do uh, the full delivery and I'm aiming for a higher dollar per hour amount than that, so it really doesn't make sense. And on top of that, you know, once I get to that highly congested area and even complete the order, I know that I'm gonna be stuck in a high traffic area when I do the next order and it kinda of just compiles on itself because I end up having to take more deliveries in that congested zone. So I end up declining a lot of these that look good on the surface level uh, and just not touching them, not even worrying about it, not worrying about rejecting that high paying offer uh, because I know that the traffic's gonna take a hit on my earnings. If you use a similar tactic, go ahead, let me know, leave a comment down below. If you use other variables other than just total pay and distance to decide your orders, I'd love to hear about that because it's actually, you gotta be pretty uh, complex about how you think about this if you don't wanna end up wasting your time and making less money. And it's really not that hard to do to just check into Google Maps, maybe once every two hours, once an hour, to check that traffic update and check that traffic flow to know where you're at. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Also, I'll leave a link down below for the Facebook group and another link for gigsharks.com. It's a website I've been working on for quite some time and basically it just connects you to all the best gigs, app jobs, et cetera, that are in your city. So you can search by city and find different opportunities and it helps to kind of, you know, balance out that side hustle, maybe find uh, potentially better side hustles, ways to supplement your income, all the different opportunities that are out there because there's really a ton of them. And sometimes you get stuck focused on to just a single side hustle uh, and there might be other opportunities out there. So go ahead and check that out and uh, make sure to give me some support there. I appreciate it.